found a, uh, a crash B-29 that was um, uh, in Greenland and wanted to try and get it rebuilt and fly it out. How did you find that, and, and what was the, the, the impetus but behind getting that out? Was it something because it was there? Or? It wasn't a, a secret. It was well known. It's just in the far reaches of the world, and uh, it had been there for I don't know how many years since the war. Uh, or just after the war, I guess. And, uh, and so at that time, I was spending some time uh, traveling around the world, uh, trying to recover old airplanes. And I made a, several deals with the Air Force Museum and the Smithsonian to give them airplanes in exchange for stuff that was uh, either at Davis Monton in Tucson or somewhere scattered around the world that uh, foreign people were no longer using but belonged to the Air Force and they'd give me that and I'd go out and, you know, I went out and got airplanes from Kwajalein out in the middle of the Pacific and, you know, here and there. And that's how I was making my money in addition to working for Lockheed. And you took a crew out there, rebuilt the B-29 and we're, we're going to uh, take it off on the ice and fly it back? Well, the first trip out there, uh, I had obtained a uh, Huey helicopter, several of them. And so uh, we gathered a crew together and w went up in the Air Force. The Air National Guard flies from Northeast United States, uh, typically up to Gre uh, Thule Air Force Base in Greenland to supply them with stuff. And so I got a deal with the Air Force where they'd haul me up there and they'd haul my helicopter up in a C-130, the Air National Guard. And at Thule, then we reassembled it and wanted to fly up, you know, I think it's 200 miles north of uh, Thule was the supposed wreck of the B-29. So the first trip up was kind of exciting because we had to set up fuel stops for the helicopter and of course we were taking tools up to, uh, we'd had some pictures of it so we knew that it was relatively intact but it bellied in on the ice and then sunk into the water. And so at any rate, we uh, set up these fuel stops. You would fly up and you know leave fuel here and uh, some tools and we'd fly back and then jump to the next one and then finally get up to Thule, I mean up to the uh, crash site and uh, the somewhere I've got a video of that of the first trip, which wasn't filmed by Nova, but on, on the second and third trip. But at any rate, uh, when we got there, we, it was unbelievable. This thing was totally intact, laying on the belly, and it sunk into water about that deep. And so we actually put the jacks under it and jacked it up. And believe it or not, we actually got one engine started. The props were all bent, but we got it started. And, and so this ec excited us, and we made plans for the next year to go back with, with a serious attempt to get it out of there. Yeah, because that had to be encouraging to get an engine started after all that. Wasn't running very good, but it, it actually <laughs> ran. <laughs>